Model horse photo shows are a great way to show your model horses from the comfort of your own home. There are lots of aspects to model horse showing, but in this video we're going to focus on how to take great photos of your models. The tips and techniques we'll be going over in this video don't apply to just model horse showing. They can also be used when taking photos of your models for other purposes such as to post to social media, share with your friends, or documenting your collection. Before we get started, know that these techniques can be applied to any type of camera. Whether you are using a full capacity DSLR, the camera that's on your phone, or anything in between, you can take great photos of your models. You don't have to own any fancy equipment or an expensive camera in order to take nice pictures of your collection. Let's break down all the tips and techniques into five categories. Lighting, camera settings, positioning your model, background, and photo editing. Let's start off with lighting. Lighting is a super important but often looked over element in photography. It can make or break your photo, especially if you are using a camera that doesn't work well in low light. A poorly lit photo can result in a grainy, unclear image. There are two types of light sources we'll be going over, natural and artificial. Natural light is as it sounds. It's the natural light we get from the sun. If you don't have good sources of artificial lights at your home to use, you can use the natural light outside for taking your photos. When using the sun as your main source of light, the time of day plays an important role in how your photos will look. The best time of day to take photos is in the morning or the evening, as this is when there are less harsh shadows cast onto your model. Taking photos when it is overcast or in an area with even shade is an excellent way to eliminate harsh shadows. Here you can see the difference of when photos of the same model are taken during the afternoon in sunlight versus in the morning in the shade. The photo in the sun has very bright highlights that wash out the model and very dark shadows which also hide the detail of the model. Whereas the photo taken in the shade has very soft shadows and it doesn't distract from your model. The second type of lighting is artificial light. Artificial light is any light that comes from a man-made source, like a light bulb or an LED light. Artificial light can be great to use because you can use it indoors at any time of day. But artificial lights also need to be arranged properly and be bright enough to get a nice shot. Photo booths are a great method of artificial light to use as they're already designed to light your objects. While smaller photo booths are getting more and more affordable, you don't have to buy one to have a nice setup for taking photos. You can make a great setup of your own with what you already have. When creating your own indoor setup, use lights that are bright and don't set them up too close to your model, as this can cause those same kinds of harsh shadows and highlights you want to avoid. Play around with what looks good in lighting your model. That could be using only one bright light in front of the model, or it could be using a couple lights spaced out around to light your model from several angles. When taking your photos, there are three main settings on your camera you'll want to pay attention to. Light balance, exposure, and focus. Most cameras have the ability to make all of these settings automatic, which can certainly make it easier than trying to figure them out on your own. But sometimes, cameras don't know what's best for the photo you're currently taking. White balance is all about the color temperature of your photo. To break it down into simple terms, it's what should be perceived as the color white to the current lighting. Outside on a clear day, it's going to have a more blue light, whereas an old desk lamp will have a yellow light, and then fluorescent lights will have a green light. Most cameras have pre-built-in settings to set the white balance for whatever environment you're shooting in. Some also allow you to set up the white balance yourself by holding up a piece of white paper to the camera and setting it that way. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about all the nuances of camera settings for photography, I'd recommend checking out other articles or videos about photography basics. If you're not sure how to access these settings on the particular camera you're using, I'd also recommend doing a Google search of the particular model of your camera or phone to learn about the ways you can change the settings on it. Now back to some general tips and techniques of camera settings in relation to model horses. When taking a photo of your model, it's important to balance the exposure. The exposure affects how bright or dark your photo looks. Again, this can be set automatically most times, but cameras don't always get it right. Here's an example of me taking a photo of protocol with my phone, but my camera wanted automatically to set my exposure just a little too bright, 
so I had to adjust it manually to get the effect I wanted. Lastly for camera settings is focus. Your model being in focus is so important, especially in a photo show. If your model is blurry and out of focus, the judge won't be able to properly evaluate it. As with other settings, this can be done manually or automatically in most cases. You want the focus of the photo to be ideally on your model's head and body. Let's move on to how to position your model and your camera for taking photos. How your model and camera is positioned can have a big impact on the look of your photo. While you can get extra creative with this in model horse photography, in this video we're going to be focusing on a simpler approach for what the ideal look for photo shows is. When positioning your model for the photo, you'll want its show side facing the camera. This typically means the side that the horse's head is turned towards. If the model doesn't have its head turned significantly in either direction, then either side of the model can be facing the camera and be its show side. Then there is how to position your camera, or what angle to use. Ideally, you want the camera to be at eye level with the model. This makes the model look more realistic, avoids distortion, and gives the judge a fair view of your model if you're taking these photos for the purpose of a photo show. Here's examples of what it looks like when you take a photo of a model from an angle that's too high or too low. Taking the photo from a high angle makes the model look, well, like a model. And it doesn't show a lot of what you would see with a side view. Taking the photo from a low angle makes the model appear larger. Which, while fun in more creative approaches to model horse photography, here it distorts the model into looking a little disproportionate and cuts off part of its hooves. When taking photos for a photo show, your backdrop can positively or negatively impact how well it complements your model. The purpose of these types of photos is to have the attention on your model, and ill-used backdrops can do the opposite of that. Keep your background simple and uncluttered, and pick a backdrop that complements your model. A simple backdrop can be created out of many different materials, like poster board, fabric, or even just an old bedsheet. You can also use the environment around you, like a bare wall or an empty shelf. Look for something that's primarily a solid color. You'll want to avoid loud patterns or intricate images. Here's an example of the difference between a cluttered backdrop and a simple one. Here I used a towel with horses on it as a backdrop. While the image on this towel is beautiful, the model placed in front of it gets completely lost in all the colors. Now here's the same model in front of a piece of white fabric. These simple backgrounds keep the attention on your model instead of your model getting lost in it. Now your backdrop doesn't have to always be just a plain colored backdrop. It is also acceptable to set up a simple scene with things like footing, a scenic backdrop, and maybe a fence. As long as these items don't distract from your model, they can be a nice addition to make your photos look a little more unique. A final important aspect to pay attention to when choosing a background or backdrop for your model is that the model's color doesn't match the background. If it does, it might drown out your model. You ideally want your backdrop to complement your model and make it pop. For example, a black model with a black backdrop blends into the background so much that you can't hardly even see the model. Whereas a black model in front of a white backdrop completely stands out now. The same goes for other colors, such as a light gray horse in front of a white backdrop, versus that same horse in front of a darker or colorful backdrop. Those are all the tips and techniques for taking a photo of your model, but what about editing it afterwards? Sometimes your photo might not come out quite the way you thought it would while taking it, and now it needs some adjusting. Fortunately, editing your photos after you take them is easier than ever. You can edit photos on a computer or on your phone or tablet. There are many free photo editing apps and softwares out there, many of which are quick and easy to use if you don't already have one built into your device. A common adjustment to make when editing photos is cropping. When cropping your photo, you'll want to cut out all the unnecessary negative space, but also make sure to leave a little room around your model. Cropping your photo right up to the edge of your model makes your photos look cramped. Leave a little room around it so your model doesn't feel claustrophobic. Lastly, there's brightness and contrast. If your photo ended up looking a little too dark or a little too light, adjusting the brightness and contrast can get a photo to look a little bit more accurate to real life. But remember not to overdo it when editing your photos. An overly bright photo can wash out all the details, and an overly contrasted photo looks clearly edited and not true to life. 
When entering photos in a photo show, you want them to best represent your model as it is in real life. There are of course many other aspects to photo editing, particularly for more creative edits, but for this video we're going to keep it to those basic and most commonly used tools. That wraps up the 5 tips and techniques for taking photos of your model for a photo show. I highly recommend giving model horse photography and photo showing a try, especially during these current times. If you've never done a live model horse show before, photo showing can be a great way to get started. If you're watching this video in June 2020, check out the Briarfest Open Show, which for the first time is being done as an online photo show this year, as a part of Virtual Briarfest. The Open Show is open to Briarfest 3-day ticket holders to enter, and if you're not a ticket holder yet for this online event, 3-day celebration tickets are still available for sale on their website. The Briar Open Show is going to be giving out flat ribbons, rosettes, and even Briar model horses to winners. Entering photos of your model online for this show has been a very easy process, and the show manager, Michelle Masters, is very helpful in answering everyone's questions. The entry period to register has been extended to June 15th, and once you've registered, you have until July 5th to upload photos of your model. Thank you so much to Briar Horses for sponsoring and collaborating on this video. Be sure to subscribe to their channel and my own if you haven't already for more model horse content. Have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone!